Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of Scott Selections here for Thursday, November 7th. Before we get into today's play of the day, quick recap of what happened yesterday. We ended up giving out a look-ahead line on the upcoming college football card on Saturday, and I'm um, actually just checking the line movement on that right now. We ended up giving out Charlotte minus 13.5 against UTEP, which we believe will possess a lot of value as that line should end up climbing to 14. Line hasn't moved yet. I expect it to move closer to kick off as UTEP is one of the worst teams in the entire FBS. So stay tuned on that one. But overall, in terms of today's play today, a lot to get to on today's card. Once again, though, the live streaming on YouTube is still currently down, so I apologize on that. I don't know if it's my computer or if it's just YouTube itself, either or, hopefully we'll get that resolved at some point, but either or, show must go on, and we look to provide you with some good betting content here on Thursday, November 7th. So without further ado, we're going to dive right into the play of the day, which will be on the NFL matchup here between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Oakland Raiders, and we actually like the Los Angeles Chargers here at minus one and a half, which is available on points bet at minus 105. And that will be the play of the day. Now, in terms of this game, there's been a pretty significant line shift here as the Raiders originally started the game as one-point favorites in the open markets. However, that line has completely changed as we've had a new favorite as the Chargers are currently one-and-a-half-point favorites in pretty much all of the offshore markets with even some minus twos available. Uh, minus two was available also at DraftKings. Uh, FanDuel had heavy juice to the Chargers at minus one and a half, but points bet still has the Chargers minus one and a half at minus 105, so that will be the line that we are using, and I'd recommend taking that now, as I expect this line to close closer to two, two and a half or so, so there should be value on this one and a half. Now, the main reason why I feel like uh, just, I'm trying, the reason for the line change could be based on two things. One, because of the fact that the Chargers looked really good against a really good Green Bay team last week, as they absolutely just shut down Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay's offense. So it could be a bit of an overreaction, but overall, the Raiders did end up winning against the Detroit Lions at home. Props to them for winning, but at the same point, I just don't think the Lions are that good. I think the Lions' defense is absolutely useless, and I definitely think the Chargers will do a better job at getting after Derek Carr than the Lions did. I think Carr will be pressured more. I think that the Chargers will do a better job of stuffing the rushing attack, led by Josh Jacobs, etc., and Detroit's rush defense has been terrible the last couple of weeks. So I think the Raiders will struggle more offensively than people anticipate. Plus, I know that the Raiders have been pretty good against the run so far this season, but they will be missing some key pieces. You have defensive end Arden Key and defensive end Josh Morrow, who are both out for this game. So because of the fact they're both out, you should see... Uh, some issues with regard to depth on the defensive line, which will be a concern considering the fact that the Chargers are starting to get healthier on the offensive line, considering the fact that Russell Okung is finally playing again, and he has been really solid so far since he's been reinserted into the starting lineup. But the Chargers last week, it was a very, I mean, it was a thorough beatdown. There was no other way to put it. Phil Rivers was solid as he ended up going 21 for 28 for 294 passing yards with zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. But overall, they spread the they they decided to spread the wealth a lot as Mike Williams had over 100 yards. Uh, Keenan Allen didn't do much, but Hunter Henry, uh, once he's when he's actually healthy, he's a really good tight end. He had seven receptions for 84 yards. I think the Raiders will struggle covering both of them, including Keenan Allen. Uh, Worley is expected to play in this game for the Raiders as their number one corner, but he definitely leaves a lot to be desired. He had a nice interception. Uh, one-handed interception, actually, last week against the Lions, but he did get torched by Galladay repeatedly, so I think that Keenan Allen should have a solid game as well. But the Chargers were extremely balanced as Melvin Gordon ended up having 12... Uh, he had 20 carries for 80 rushing yards and two touchdowns, and backup running back Austin Eckler also had 70 yards on the ground, so the Chargers definitely stuck to a balanced attack, which I think will keep the Raiders off guard. It will keep the Raiders off the field, as the Chargers will should be able to move the ball relatively easily against this Raiders defense that has left a lot to be desired due to injuries and just, yeah, they've been re they've been bad. There's no way to put it. I think the Chargers are better defensively. I think they have more weapons on offense, and I respect the fact that the Raiders are 4-4, four and four, but the Chargers are the desperate team here at 4-5 and five, trying to keep their hopes alive. I know that this is a huge divisional, this is a huge division game, so both teams are trying to keep their hopes alive, but I just simply think the Chargers are the better team. And Chargers have won two straight. Do they look great against Chicago? No, but they looked really good against Green Bay. It seems like the switching of offensive coordinators did do a lot for the Chargers. They finally looked organized for the first time in a couple of years. So I definitely think that they should come out focused. I think they should get the job done. 
And I think that the Raiders, even though they're uh, schematically they've looked pretty consistent this season, I just think that they're the less talented team in this matchup, which helps explain why money has come in on the Chargers repeatedly. So the and also to mention some trends that I forgot to mention before, the Chargers have actually dominated the series in recent years. The Chargers are four and ATS in the last four meetings, and the Chargers are also four and ATS in the last four meetings in Oakland. So the Chargers have been really good. Plus, the Chargers are also 4-0 ATS in their last four Thursday night games. So they've been really good overall in this type of spot. And for that reason, the play of the day will be on the Los Angeles Chargers, minus 1.5, which is available on points bet at minus 105. And that will be the play of the day. Now, in terms of some leans on this game, though, the total's gone up from 47.5 to 48.5 or even 49. Most of that's due to the fact that the Raiders' defense is absolutely terrible. I'm going to actually lean to the under, though. Even though the Chargers have a pretty solid offense and their offensive line starting to get healthy again, I simply just think that this team loves to run the ball too much. I don't think I think this team will try to stay balanced. I don't think that this, they'll, start, they'll suddenly turn into a pass funnel against the Raiders. I think the two defensive ends for the Raiders being out should lead to a couple more uh, you know holes in the ground game, and I think the Chargers will look to... And the Chargers will look to take advantage of that by running the ball with Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler. So I think you should see them control the time of possession. I think you should see the Raiders also try to establish the ground game with Josh Jacobs as they will also look to move the ball on the ground. The issue with the total here is that the Raiders just simply don't have many deep plays or big plays. You have the occasional big run by Josh Jacobs, but mostly it's done through moving the chains on these uh, you know, short West Coast dump-off passes. So I think that that should lead to a lower scoring game. In terms of my prediction for the score, I think that the score will come out somewhere in the realm of 27-20 to 20 for the Chargers, so I will lean to the under on that one. But overall, in terms of the other games today to talk about, uh, in terms of college football, you have Louisiana Lafayette versus Coastal Carolina, and you have Temple versus South Florida. Don't really have many thoughts on this game. In terms of South Florida, though, a lot of money's coming on the under. It opened up at 53. It's currently down to 50. So I think this game will be more low scoring than people anticipate. I'll link to Temple, though. I just think they're a better team. I've seen South Florida play. They have played a lot better since they ended up switching quarterbacks. But as a whole, I just think Temple's a better team. I think they have more physicality. I think that they have a better quarterback with Russo. They have some weapons at the receiving core. They got a good running back. They got a physical defense. I think they should play well. They've been terrible defensively the last two weeks against SMU and UCF, but those two teams have two of the best three offenses in the conference, and South Florida does not have that, so I think Temple will bounce back here. Lean to Temple there, and I would lean to the under as well. And moving on, we have Louisiana Lafayette versus Coastal Carolina. I've watched Lafayette play a couple of times. I know that they're a solid team, and they probably will end up either winning the conference or seriously competing for the conference, as they've been... As they're currently 6-2 overall, I personally still think Appalachian State will win the conference, but either or. Coastal Carolina's actually looked decently. They ended up winning a two-point conversion against Troy last week. Defensively, they have not been great, but as a whole, I like the spot for Coastal Carolina here. I think that I think uh, Louisiana's getting too many points here. I know the spread has climbed from 11.5 to 14.5, or even 14, depending on where you shop. I think that's too many points. I'll lean to Coastal Carolina, but I would lean to the over. As Coastal Carolina's defense is not great. Louisiana Lafayette has been pretty good, but Coastal Carolina's offense has been good in the last couple of weeks. So I will lean to the over, and I will lean to Coastal Carolina plus the 14.5. And, and those are my thoughts on the college football games. Now, in terms of the NBA, uh, looking at the betting card here, uh, really not that many great games to write home about. I would lean to the over in the Phoenix Miami game, as that line has climbed from 216 to 218. So you have seen some steady money on the over. So I would back that line movement lean to the over as well. You've also seen a huge line shift in the Clippers and Trailblazers game. That line opened up roughly like 226 or so on the totals, all the way up to 231. A lot of money on the over. I don't know if there's any value on it, but I would still lean to the over. I know the Clippers played yesterday against the Bucks. High scoring game, McCoy Leonard did not play, and he will be playing tonight. So I would personally have to lean to the Clippers minus 5.5. Portland will come out focused for this game after a complete no-show against the Warriors. But I simply put, I just don't think they're that good of a team. I think the Clippers will control the pace. I think they will go up and down. I think Lou Williams will score a lot off the bench. I think you should see Kawhi play well, though. And I think Lillard will do whatever he wants. I don't think it's that point in the regular season. I don't think it's that point in the season where Kawhi would guard 
Lillard, I think that might happen if they match it up in the playoffs, but it's a regular season, nobody cares, and I think you should see a high-scoring game. Both teams, I think, should get into the 115s, and I think this game will go over, but I would lean to the Clippers in this one, as I think they will score 120-plus. So lean to the Clippers and lean to the over. Other than that, though, uh, lean to the under in the Thunder and Spurs game. Open up at 214. It's currently down to roughly 211. So steady money on the under and I would lean to the under as well. San Antonio looked good for three quarters against Atlanta, and then they fell apart in the fourth. But this team doesn't like to run tempo. Oklahoma City doesn't like to run tempo either with Chris Paul leading the point, as they typically run more of a pick-and-roll style of offense with Donovan as the head coach. And I think this will be relatively lower scoring. I think both teams will get into the low 100s. I think this game will be close. Lean to the under on that one. Now, in terms of college basketball, uh... There's a handful of games here on Thursday. None of them are really that great. In terms of line movement, Washington State's gone from minus 2 to minus 3 against Seattle. Do I think much about that game? No. I don't think Washington State's that good. Seattle's not that good either. I'd have to lean to Washington State with the Cougars at home. But overall, I think there's a reason why Seattle's only a 3-point underdog here. That looks like a potential trap line, so I would avoid that at all costs. Other than that, though, uh, looking at the rest of the card, really not much to talk about here. Uh, if you wanted to lean to Clemson against Presbyterian, you could. Uh, Clemson would open up at 18.5. They're currently at 19. But Clemson has already played a game this season, so they could they could look a lot better on offense as after such a terrible showing at home against Virginia Tech and their opener has ended up losing by a score of 67 to 60. Is Clemson a good team? No, but Presbyterian hasn't played yet this season, and Clemson has, so they have that working for them. I expect Clemson to look a little bit more organized in their second game of the season. So if you want to lean that way, I would lean to Clemson minus the 19. Other than that, though, not really much else to talk about in college basketball. Now, in terms of hockey, uh, I would lean to the Islanders against the Penguins. Islanders, if you haven't noticed, I'm a fan of the Islanders, so I do know this. They've won 10 straight. They've been the hottest team in hockey for the last week and a half, two weeks. And uh, it seems like uh, just Barry Trotz is just a genius hockey mind. And I know that Pittsburgh has a big name. They're big-time players with Malkin and Crosby. The record really isn't that great. Uh, they have been underachieving up to this point in the regular season, as Pittsburgh is currently 8-6-1. and one. Not really much right home about it. I know that Crosby is a threat to do whatever he wants. I know that the Penguins might be annoyed after getting swept by the Islanders in the playoffs, but I still think the Islanders are the better overall team at this point. Lean to the Islanders on that one. Other than that, though, looking at the rest of the betting card, I actually will lean to Ottawa here as an underdog against the Kings. I wrote an article about it for Stats All, uh, uh, for Winners and Winers, actually. So if you want to check that out on the website, you can. But long story short, I like Ottawa here because I just think the Kings aren't good enough to be minus two, uh, minus 125 favorites. Ottawa, even though they don't have a great record, they actually have a better record than the Kings. And Ottawa has actually been decent at home with a 3-4 and four home record, whereas the Kings have lost six of their eight road games. Both goalies are bad. There's no real way to sugarcoat it. I just think that Ottawa should not be as big of an underdog as they are at home. Lean to Ottawa for just value alone, as I don't think the Kings should be laying 130 to anybody. So lean to the Senators on that one. Other than that, though, uh, excuse me, uh, not really much else to talk about, though, looking at the rest of the card. Um, where else would I lean here? Uh, do I have anything else? Uh, yeah, I'd actually lean to the uh, Capitals as an underdog here. Florida's been better lately, but at the same point, I think Washington's too good to be an underdog anywhere, and I think that Holtby has looked a lot better after a shaky start going uh, in the beginning, but Washington also has been in pretty solid form. They're towards the top of the Eastern Conference, and Florida's been pretty good, but I think that Washington should be a favorite here. There's a reason why money has come in on Washington so far in the early morning, and I will lean to them, as it wouldn't surprise me if Washington closes as slight chalk, and they're currently still going at a plus price. So lean to Washington on that one. But the play of the day will be on the Los Angeles Chargers, which is available at minus 1.5, at minus 105 on points bet, and that will be the play of the day. Other than that, though, let's get over this installment of Scott's Legends here for Thursday, November 7th, and good luck to all of you and your respective bets today. Bye, everyone.